right. Hi, everyone. So uh, today's lecture will be over the strengths of assets and bases. So you guys are going to be learning how to, uh, if you're given a chemical formula, how to figure out whether it's a strong or weak acid or a strong and weak base. Um, so let's just do a quick review on what uh, acid is. So remember, for acids, the formula will always lead with the proton, right? So it leads with H, okay? So something like H2SO4, right? Or HCl, okay? So it's always that proton in front, right? So this Cl is actually Cl minus, right? Um, so it's neutral, H plus and Cl minus. Um, in H2SO4, because the sulfate is two minus, that's why you need the two protons, right? So however many protons are in front, needs to balance out the anion. Okay, so you have the HCl. This we call hydrochloric acid, if you guys remember the naming, hydrochloric acid. When you put it in water, what happens is you get the creation of hydronium ions. So basically this proton moves to the water and you get hydronium and chloride. So hydronium is positively charged, one of your polyatomics, right? And then your chloride is negatively charged. So it's there, um, um, you have it, it's charge balance, right? The left side of the equation is neutral. The right side of the equation is neutral because you have a plus and a minus, okay? So this hydronium uh, ion is what gives you an acidic solution. Okay, that's why it's considered acidic. Okay. So in a strong situation, 100% say you have a strong acid. If you have 100 HCl molecules, you produce 100 hydronium molecules and 100 chlorides, meaning you have 100% dissociation. Okay. Dissociation means they split up into their ions, right? H plus and Cl minus. So HCl will give 100% of its protons. And so that's why HCl is considered a strong acid. For weak acid, you have less than 3%. That's the highest, it's less than 3% dissociation. Okay, so that's why it's considered weak. So something like HF, this is a weak acid. So when you put it in water, you'll still get hydronium, but not as many. Okay, so you only have if you had 100 HF molecules, you only create three hydronium. So only three out of the 100 of HF molecules will dissociate to form hydronium. And you also get three fluorides, right? Meaning you still have 97 intact HF, okay? And so an, a solution is not considered acidic until the H plus uh, gets released, right? So if it's still intact, then it's not contributing to the acidity of the solution. And so that's why it's considered a weak acid, right? Okay, so now that you guys know the definition and also um, what is a strong and a weak acid, what it means, right? It's about percent dissociation. We're gonna go in and learn how to tell which acids and which bases are strong and weak. Right. Actually, let's quickly also say what a base is. Um, a base is anything that is hydroxide. Okay, so remember hydroxide, OH minus. Um, uh, so something like sodium hydroxide. When you put it in water, it's going to dissociate into its ions, sodium plus and OH minus. Okay. Um, 
So this we considered a strong base, but even ammonia, when you put it into water, we're gonna get NH4 plus and OH minus. All right, so basically the proton from water moves over to ammonia and you get ammonium and you get hydroxide. Okay. So anything that forms a hydroxide in water is considered basic. Okay, so one of the easiest ways to spot a base is if it already has hydroxide in it, but not all bases have hydroxide in it because ammonia is a base, but it doesn't have OH in it, right? Um, and so for those, um, the way I remember it is any nitrogen containing compound is a base. So this is a nitrogen containing compound. It's also a base, but they're all weak bases, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now let's go into the strengths. Let's do acids first, and let's do strong first. Okay, for strong acids, group seven A acids are strong. So, an example: HCl, right? Hydrochloric acid. Uh, the nonmetal Cl minus is in group 7A, right? So if you just throw a proton in front, you get the acid, right? So hydrochloric acid. Also, hydrobromic acid, a hydroionic acid, okay? So group 7A acids, except for HF. So notice HF is not on the list. So even though F is in group 7A, HF is not considered a strong acid. Um, the reason for that is fluoride is so small. Uh, since it's small, it binds to the proton a lot more strongly, and it doesn't want to let go, right? So in order to have a strong acid, uh, you need that deprotonation of the H+. And since you don't have that, that's why HF is considered weak. <clears throat> Here's another way to tell that you have a strong acid. So if you have an oxo acid, remember what those are? Oxo acids are acids that are oxygen containing, hence oxo, right? So for oxo acid, all you need to do is count the number of oxygen and the number of protons. Take the difference between the two. So look at the number of oxygens and subtract the number of protons. If it is greater than, if the number of oxygen is greater than the number of protons by two or more, yeah, let's just say two or more, then it's strong, okay? Otherwise it's weak, okay? So here's an example, H2SO4. Count the number of oxygens, four, count the number of protons, two. Four minus two is two. So two or more, this is considered strong. How about HNO3? Three minus one is two, so it's strong. How about H3PO4, okay? Notice these are all oxo acids, right? And remember, those are the ones that uh, come from your polyatomic. So just count the number of oxygen, four minus three, that's one. One is not two or more, okay? So H3PO4 is actually a weak acid. It does not belong on this list, okay? So quite easy to see, right? You don't have to memorize this. Just follow these quick tips. Um, HClO4. That belongs on the strong list. This is perchloric acid, four minus one, right, is three. So more than two, you're gonna have a strong acid, okay. All right, let's go to the weak list. If you know strong, you actually already know weak as well, because if it's not strong, then it's weak, right? That 
We can spell it out. HF, right? We just said HF is wheat. Um, and then for oxo acids. If the number of oxygen only is greater than the number of protons by less than two, okay, then it's a weak acid. So H3PO4 is an example, right? Four minus three is one. So that's less than two. Sulfurous acid. Three minus two is one, okay? Um, so it's weak. HClO, this one is hypochlorous acid. Uh, one oxygen minus one proton, that's zero, less than two. So it's weak. You see how easy that is? Uh, it's great because there's so many acids, right? and so many bases. You don't wanna to have to memorize uh, one by one, whether it's weak or strong, you just go by these rules. Um, easy enough to memorize, right? To remember these rules. Okay, now let's go to bases. So remember how to spot a base, you either have hydroxide in your formula or it's a nitrogen containing compound, right? Um, so for strong bases, these will always be the non-nitrogen containing. So it's only the hydroxides and it's specific. It's group 1A and 2A hydroxides um, and oxide as well. So for example, sodium hydroxide, okay. very common strong base, sodium hydroxide, um, calcium hydroxide, but since calcium is in group 2A, right, the hydroxides are OH minus, oxides are O2 negative, okay? So calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. Right? Um, and now the oxides are just basically like hydroxides, but dehydrated. So uh, dehydrated means you take out water. So let's say you have calcium hydroxide, if you take out water from this, that's H2O, right? So subtract two hydrogens and one oxygen, and what you're left with is CaO. So calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide aren't that different from each other. You put calcium oxide into water, you still get the same thing. You still get hydroxide, right? And so that's why calcium oxide is considered a base as well, because it will form hydroxides when you put it into water. Um, barium hydroxide, right? Any anything in group one A, group two A, okay? So easy to remember. Weak bases. Okay. Uh, we are we saw one ammonia, and that one shows up a lot, and so that's why I write it out. But really, generally, anything containing nitrogen. And then also um, uh, uh, COOH groups. Anything with the COOH in it is, uh, oh wait, no, actually that would be considered an acid. So that's it. That's all you need to remember. Very easy, right? You got ammonia, you got um, any nitrogen containing compound is gonna be a weak base, okay? Um, so that's it guys for this section. I'll see you in the next video.